Hey VC, it's Mazzy here, and um, by popular demand, volume two of box sets, CD box sets. And um, you know, I didn't realize so many VC were closet CD people, but um, I'm gonna go through a bunch of box sets. I think this is gonna end up being a trilogy. Maybe I'll wait for a while before I do volume three, because I have an idea of, of formats for that, for those. But I'll go through these really fast. Again, they're just compilations uh, put out. Sometimes they're full album discographies by artists, and sometimes they are just some um, interesting packaging and uh, groups of music that have uh, thematically a connection. So while we're going, I'm going to play Woody Allen classics in the background, a lot of classical music from various Woody Allen uh, movies, including Love and Death, Manhattan, Another Woman, Midsummer Night, Sex Comedy, Hannah and Her Sisters, Crimes and Misdemeanors, and Shadow and Fog. So a lot of great uh, classical from the Columbia Records uh, Masterworks archive here. But a nice overview collection. So without further ado, box sets. Now, Richard Riley just uh, did a video and he showed a, um, a very favorite classic album uh, by Bobby Gentry and the Delta Suite. And a lot of people just know of, of Bobby Gentry at, for performing and writing and recording in 1967, Ode to Billy Joe. But I tell you, one of the best box sets I own in my collection, and it was a surprise to me as I'm sure it's a surprise to you. Came out last year, got rave reviews. I think it's nominated for a Grammy, but it's this, Bobby Gentry. And it's basically all her Capitol recordings. A stunning, beautiful box set of uh, eight discs, including a live BBC performance. Um, it includes Oda Billy Joel album, her uh, duet album with Glenn Campbell, and it's it's not it's beyond what you think. Um, if you like uh, sort of country folk with a little southern soul, it's got a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, book. Obviously, you know the cover of Ode to Billy Joe, and um, I gotta say, it's one of the best best box sets I have. Again. I hear it's a little hard to find right now because it, it did way beyond their wildest expectations. And it was, uh, I think it was produced in the UK, but distributed here. And they had some issue with uh, not printing enough up in the, in the initial um, pressing. But it's great liner notes, great discography, but Bobby Gentry, uh, one of my personal favorites of any box that I own. The Girl from Chickasaw County. And these are where the CDs are housed. And um, there's her Capitol Records discography. The Complete Capitol Masters, that's what that is. Um, I'm gonna keep Beatles stuff separate and I'm not gonna do jazz. That'll be for a future time and not any chronological order. Now that Kate Bush's CDs are out and remasters and albums, um, this probably isn't quite as valuable, but this was a rare set that came out um, way, way back uh, in the UK. This woman's work, 1978 to 1990, Kate Bush. This, uh, Mazzy here's a big Kate Bush fan and um, includes some kind of cool artwork, little pieces of uh, ephemera. And it includes her, uh, her first albums up until, let's see, Essential World. And includes two discs of 12-inch mixes and uh, songs from soundtracks and alternate things. So uh, this woman's work by Kate Bush, a great, great, great collection. Serge Gainsbourg, Serge Gainsbourg um, is a favorite of mine. Some of the stuff's out there. And a French uh, composer, writer, producer. This is the essential uh, of his albums. And I love it. Again, it's the mini LP cardboard sleeves. 
I tell you, there's one album especially, even if you don't, I think it's this one. History de Melody Nelson, Serge Gainboard. If you listen to this album, get this album alone if you're not going for the whole box. And then listen to, uh, I think it's um, Beck's either Morning Phase or uh, the other mellow one I'm blanking out. He takes it right off of some of this. So uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful set. Serge Bain, if you like French music, French pop, um, he's sort of the, pretty much the godfather or the father Godfather, grandfather, father, some kind of father figure of um, French pop music. Another comp that is one of my favorites, and this was a Rhino. Rhino was probably the king of during the 90s and 2000s of great, great box sets. A lot of thematical sets along with artist uh, overviews. But uh, this is a 40 CD set of great cowboy music. I'm a big, big cowboy fan, even though I'm some more than country uh, and there's a difference. I mean, they have volume one, cowboy classics, things like Gene Autry, Sons of the Pioneers, Walter Brennan, Marty Robbins, like Big Iron, Riders of the Sky, Marty Robbins, Strawberry Rowan, Happy Trails, Roy Rogers. There's one, Silver Screen Cowboys, which is basically uh, cowboys from TV, like Tex Ritter, beautiful book in here, Lone Ranger series. Uh, this would feel right at home in a Quentin Tarantino Western, but it's a great, great mix. Gene Autry, a great mix of cowboy classics. And then there's songs from movies. There's Gene Autry and Roy Rogers, movies and television themes like um, The Magnificent Seven, Bonanza, High Noon, Gunsmoke, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, Rawhide, Maverick, um, Wagon Train, on and on. But um, a personal favorite of mine, I don't see a lot of cowboy fans in this um, in the VC, or at least they don't show this kind of music. Are you embarrassed? Are you really embarrassed to show cowboy classics? Come on. You know, you show Billy Joel. You show that crap. All right, all right, all right. I don't want to offend anybody. Um, <laughs> continuing with Rhino's obsessive box set design thing. Again, I'm a design freak. And sometimes, you know, the box got me into something. So, brain in a box. You know, this is where you put your brain when you're tired and you want it to rest. Look at this. Sort of a 3D brain in a box. Like all those 50s sci-fi movies. And it's basically brain in a box with... <laughs> brain in a book and what it is it's the science fiction collection um, is that who I think it is is that Sun Ra uh, <laughs> a lot of movie magic a lot of sci-fi movie but just to give you a little overview here it's got science fiction double features, Rocky Horror Picture Show, 2001 A Space Odyssey, music from the day the earth stood still, it came from outer space, Twilight Zone, Lost in Space, My Favorite Martian, a lot of theme songs, Telstar, uh, Blast Off, uh, UFO, Rocket, Machines, Humans from Earth, Radar Blues. So it's got old stuff, new stuff, rock and roll stuff, Louis Prima, Bleep Bleep, the song's called The Blob, The Spaceman, Parliament, um, Unfunky UFO. So you get the gist of this. It's sort of that, the bomb scare of sci-fi fiction, 50s and 60s collaboration. It's a hoot to put this on random and play it, but look at this box set. I mean, we're talking about over the top packaging. But Mazzy loves this stuff. Look at this. This, um, brings out the kid in me, or the sci-fi freak in me, the nerd in me in a way. Um, and another uh, theme, Rhino did uh, reissues of the Nuggets boxes, and then they went on and did an LA box, they did a British UK box, and they did this one, obviously you know since me, being the San Francisco boy I am. Love is a song we sing, San Francisco Nuggets, 1965 to 1970. So psychedelic, garagey, Let's Get Together by Dino Valenti, who um, wrote the song, you know the L Youngbloods version of it, and he 
basically uh, was a member of later, earlier, he went to prison for marijuana, then he came back and rejoined Quicksilver Messenger Service. But it has Country Joe and the Fish, the We Five, You Were On My Mind, uh, the Warlocks, which, you know, became uh, the Grateful Dead. It's got the Vegetables, Jefferson Airplane, It's No Secret, The Great Society with Great Slick, uh, The Grassroots, uh, Mojo Men, Sons of Champlin, which is one of my, you don't hear them at all here. I need to do something on them sometime. Great San Francisco Band with Horns, uh, just barely predated Chicago in terms of a, a rock and roll horn band. A little more soulful though. Uh, it's got Country on the Fish, Sop with Campbell, Camel, Hello, Hello, uh, Count Five, Psychotic Reaction, which is a classic. I love that uh, Chocolate Watch Band, Country Weather, Janis Joplin, The Young Bloods, The Sons of Champlin again, Steve Miller Band, Movie Grape, of course, Movie Grape, um, and a great book of, there's one of my crushes on the right. On your left, actually, Grace Slick uh, from the airplane. But uh, really beautiful book overview of the sounds of San Francisco. You know, you've seen my if I, go back in my archive here and uh, seek out some of my San Francisco rock uh, album showings. I do a psychedelic or a the San Francisco sound. I do one of Fillmore and Avalon posters. So if you're inclined for that. Another great Rhino box, and I only have the first volume. I have the Warner Brothers years. This is the Golden Road, 1965 to 1973. It's the entire um, Warner Brothers Grateful Dead catalog in little uh, archive uh, sleeves. Really nicely mastered, so in terms of a digital form of Grateful Dead. The beautiful book, obviously. They always do the book things and the archives. So, uh, Grateful Dead. There's nothing like a Grateful Dead concert. And I saw the Grateful Dead maybe 18 times ever, starting in 1968. I stopped around 1976, and then I saw them once or twice again around 89. And then I kind of uh, left them back in the dust, even though I, I like them a lot. I just kind of went into other things. Uh, two other, uh, well, actually one other album collection. I showed Aretha on the first video. This is the Complete Atlantic Records by Otis Redding. Again, another wonderful little um, box of cardboard sleeves. So you get the idea of that. And I'm putting this in because this is one of my favorites. It came out originally as a record store day vinyl, uh, just a two record set of version of it. But the larger expanded version came out um, for Rhino and it's, um, was it six CDs or four CDs? I forgot now. But it's the um, complete Whiskey A Go Go concerts. Really, really good. Vinyl community, get the two LP set. That's probably enough for anybody. It's basically one full set probably edited through, I forgot now, um, from April 1966. The 8th, 9th, and 10th, 1966. Six CDs, all in these little sleeves, like old posters, and of course, we gotta show this, just because this is a, YouTube is a visual medium. So, let us see these things, right? Otis, I mean, this is, this would be a good, whoop. <laughs> But put it up right side, Mazzy. Um, what a great poster of the time. This That style 60s posters you'd see. Um, Volt recording artist, Otis Redding. And obviously more liner notes on the back. But you know, you just can't have enough space to put posters and I don't want to plaster them everywhere on the wall. Um, try to be a little tasteful here. If it's not framed, I won't put it up. Um, but again, I'm a big, big Otis Redding fan. Uh, you know, there's Otis boxes and, and a lot of reissues from Rhino, Atlantic Records. So, uh, I mean, you should have some Otis Redding in your, um, in your collection. Okay, we're gonna switch now to The Dead Can't Dance. Uh, you should have some Dead Can't Dance records. 
a duo pretty much, um, ethereal, Middle Eastern, but they're from UK. And uh, this is a collection from 1981 to 1998. They have a new album that came out last year that was really wonderful. And this, I believe, has a DVD in it as well. But it's a beautiful clamshell, old-fashioned, styled archive book with beautiful photography, beautiful artwork. Show that ready. And then all the CDs are in this above slip type of case here. Um, great collection. Um, there's, there's a video on here on the DVD. Um, just great music. So it's three CDs of music and a DVD. Um, but Dead Can't Dance. Um, is it Lisa? Lisa, I want to say Jermaine. I'm blanking on her name. She's a vocal voice uh, a lot on the soundtrack to Gladiator. And um, come on, I need to tell you who it is. I didn't prepare this. I'm like uh, Mr. Hall of Fame. I'm a one take wonder here where I just kind of go through it and I, um, I just do it once. So you need to bear with me and uh, you know pour yourself a drink or something. Uh, anyway, Lisa and um, the, you know, yada yada. Okay, forget it, I'm not gonna find it right now but um, that's another of my favorite sets lovely creatures this is really great it celebrates um, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds from 1984 to 2014 again the addict in me of these box sets goes for the deluxe edition which has a beautiful archive book um, with photographs and pictures and little postcards and things stuck in here. A young Nick Cave. If you know the song Deanna, oh. <laughs> there's Deanna. There's Deanna, who you wrote about in the song Deanna by Nick Cave. So a lot of little things of typing the lyrics to that song and other songs. Um, there's different configurations of this, so you don't have to go through the whole big book like this. But if it's an artist I truly love, and I'm, you know, I haven't really shown any Nick Cave here, but Boatman's Calling, Boatman's Calling is my favorite Neil Young, excuse me, Neil Cave. Not Neil Cage, Neil, I'm sorry, Nick Cave, Nick Cave, slow down, Mazzy, Nick Cave, um, that Boatman Calling is my favorite um, Nick Cave album, plus I love him and um, I love their soundtracks, Warren Ellis and uh, Nick Cave have done quite a few soundtracks and they're usually gorgeous soundtracks. So, beautiful artwork on the book, beautiful artwork on the package, on the slipcase. Um, the box itself for the CDs comes in a folder here. You know, one thing about CDs and box sets, they make it sexy and it's the reason why a lot of us didn't mind leaving vinyl originally, although now you know, I had my 15 year vinyl hiatus, which I've been back forcefully with, but you know, there's a reason for CDs. And I said in the earlier video, the companion piece to this is that the CD format is probably best for these kinds of sets. Instead of having, you know, 18 LPs and things like that, you got it all combined here. Okay. Um, I think I showed this on a video, so I'll be quick. David Sylvian was in a band called Japan, which is sort of a glam band in the, um, starting around 1977, 78. He went on to do sort of more uh, ethereal, introspective music. And this is called, um, 
what's it called? The uh, the um, the weather box. It's way long out of print, but it has his albums: um, Gone to Earth, Brilliant Tree, Secret of the Beehives. Uh, there's a great song, Let the Happiness In, which you should uh, Google and watch uh, the YouTube video. Let the Happiness In by David Sylvian. Very low voice. Um, again, beautiful artwork with the weather box. One of my personal favorite artists. In the last 15 years, his stuff's even more out there, more ethereal. Um, not as accessible to some, but again, a very, very favorite artist of mine. I like his uh, minimalist mixed with electronic, folky, jazzy to a point. Um, those later records of, of starting around, I don't know, 2003, uh, four, five are just spectacular in my book. But Weatherbox, David Sylvian. I did show this on something. Talk about our outrageous artwork. A Talking Heads overview, not a greatest hits, not a complete album collection. Where the fuck do you put this? <laughs> no, I leave it on my shelf in, in one of the sections here. But look at this artwork, and I forgot the name of the painter, but it's pretty wild stuff. I mean, it's it's you can't even show the beauty of this. They talk, here's their chronology, almost like a timeline. You can't show the beauty of this on a video like this. With the Talking Heads, and you know, David Byrne brought this artist in. Um, just, just amazing, amazing. Um, you know, you know me. I really like to credit. Uh, let's see. Okay. Da, 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 da. Vladimir Dubarsky, Dubarsky. He's the cover artist on this. He's the painter. I had to find that because this is so spectacular. Beautiful design, beautiful, but it's it's like one of those what the fuck? Where do you put this thing? But if you have the space, and um, but it, of course it comes down to the music. It's gorgeous music. Um, the last final three things: Songbird. This is a rare track of Amy Lou Harris. I'm a big Amy Lou Harris fan. These are outtakes, alternate things, duets she did. Came out a number of years ago. Not a greatest hits, but a nice overview of art, other artists she's worked with. I've all been a, I've always been a um, Amy Lou Harris fan. I saw her first tour with the Hot Band, which included James Burton, who was Elvis Presley's guitar player, and Rodney Crowell. And of course she was uh, discovered by and uh, really pushed by Graham Parsons and is the duet vocalist on uh, Graham's two official solo albums. So I'm gonna end with two complete, way too much music by an artist box sets, but not two for me. I'm a completist when I love an artist. I like to study um, what they've done even that there are moments in uh, their uh, discography that aren't up to par as much. And two are Bob Dylan and Johnny Cash on Columbia Records um, for the most part of their career. Um, Johnny Cash made a lot of amazing records. He made a lot of mediocre records. And Columbia has put a series of these boxes like this that are only for the obsessive collector like myself. And again, as I said on the other video, the companion piece, it's great to load these on a hard drive and put them on random so you get an overview. But look at this, Johnny Cash. It emulates those big, giant, massive classical box sets like 100 Years of Beethoven or, or whatever they, you know. But look at that, look at that. Johnny Cash, the complete Columbia album collection. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna slip here. Columbia Records, again, cardboard sleeve records. So I'll just pull, you know, one or two out. 
There we go. There we go. Um, and every single album, it's got his religious stuff, his gospel music that are just, you know, his Holy, Holy Land, one from Israel, the gunfighter ballads type things. Obviously the prison albums, Folsom and San Quentin. Um, they're just records that, you know, real, I mean, this box set illustrates an amazing career. And of course, there's a big, beautiful book that comes with it. Talks about the entire collection. Again, I have these loaded in. Uh, they're numbered in terms of uh, album numbers, first album. So, you, so if you take them out, you can put them back in order. Kind of like a puzzle, but they tell you where they go. Johnny Cash, The Man in Black, for The Obsessive, and I'm gonna end with um, the same thing for Bob Dylan. Now, this was uh, all his albums up through The Tempest. This was the last album that this went to. He's had some albums since. It has a collection called Side Tracks, which are unreleased singles or alternate singles to fill it out with. Bob Dylan, I'm, as you know, I'm a massive Bob Dylan fan, and this doesn't even include the uh, official bootlegs. That's a whole other set and a whole other thing. I probably have more Dylan on compact disc than any other artist. Again, a beautiful, beautiful book. The old CBS logo. So, there's Mazzy's, Mazzy's volume two of uh, box set extravaganza. I mean, it really is a wonderful way to collect music. And, you know, you can get in the whole thing of mastering and vinyl sounds better as a certain uh, holistic, if, if I can say that, that makes any sense, uh, feeling of playing records. And that's my primary choice for music when I'm home. Sit back, maybe have a glass of wine or a little bite. Sit back for two to three hours and unwind and you gotta turn the record over and pay attention, and there's nothing like that. But for uh, artist overviews, I can load these in my car, I can put them on my, um, my uh, iPhone in my car, load an entire collection of an artist, take a road trip, play them when I have a party, when I have friends over, when I'm in my office here. My office downstairs where, where I'm recording this is primarily my CD den. I have vintage JBL 100 speakers, which some of you have seen before. Uh, L100s, uh, some feel that uh, that's a bloated sound. They actually work well with these CDs. Um, there's a new version of the speakers that are supposed to be amazing, but um, this is good for, uh, CDs are the perfect format for while I'm working. You know, I don't have to get up and turn the record over that. Um, I'm not a streamer in terms of uh, Tidal or uh, Spotify or that. I just don't do that because I have enough of my own music. but. Anyway, thanks for watching, and um, the support is amazing. I really appreciate um, you following me and um, watching these videos. Again, if you're really interested, look back, because there are a handful of early videos that didn't get a lot of views because I didn't have uh, a lot of uh, subscribers. Now they have more, there might be some that interest you. I try to have a couple categories. I have a jazz category where I put anything jazz related, and I have an artist, um, feature artist category where I put things like if I do Procol Harum or I do the, um, you know, the birds or something, uh, any overview of one artist will be in that category. Uh, do I have a Beatles category? I probably should if I don't. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Mazzy loves you. And um, VC, this is a great, great place to hang out once in a while. And um, thanks for inviting me into your house's homes. Houses, houses of the holy. Take care. Bye.